Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, we give you honor. We give you glory, we give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good, we Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your presence.
God praise. Amen. Glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. He's good. He's worthy to be praised. There is no one like our God, and we just thank you, Father God. Lord, we praise you, Lord. He's a chain breaker. You know, sometimes I believe that. I heard a preacher once say, that when you're in church and you're singing songs, sometimes you just can't raise your hands because those chains are a little too heavy. And I was like, whoa. He wasn't talking about physical chains. He was talking about those spiritual chains. And so, hey, this is a, a place where chains are broken, amen? Only Jesus can do that. And I just want to sing this song. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. You're trying to fill the same old holes inside. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. Yeah, he is. If you need freedom, the saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got change, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day, the dead of found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We run the things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. And there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker.
your grace is enough, Jesus. Your grace is enough for us.
you're so good. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. There's no other name but the name of Jesus. Amen. We can only be saved by the name of Jesus. And it's not to us, Lord, but it's to your name be the glory. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The cross before me, the world behind. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Before me, the world behind, no turning back. Raise the banner high, it's not for me, it's all for you. Let the heavens shake, and split the sky. Let the people clap their hands and cry, it's not for me, it's all for you. to 
Jesus is a good day. May you find peace in his presence. May you find joy in his power. You be assured morning, noon, and night that he's a sovereign king and he is my 
mighty and worthy to be praised. Nothing takes him by surprise. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The one who was and is and is to come. He is Jesus. We bless your holy name, Lord. Lord, you are the baptizer. Lord Jesus, you baptize with fire. May your Holy Spirit fall upon this church. It is your church, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Bless his holy name. Go to the person next to you. You tell them Jesus and you love them. That is the truth today. Those watching online, we welcome you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Good morning. God bless you this morning. Welcome to Grace Christian Center. Welcome all those that are viewing online. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Summer is here and it is hot outside. So praise the Lord for air conditioned buildings. Amen. In this part of the state of Texas, in this part of the nation, it is hot and humid. And I thank God that I don't have no hair to deal with. Praise the Lord. I have some announcements here this, uh, this morning. Tonight at 5 p.m., we are having our GCC graduation tonight, award ceremony as well. And so I encourage everyone to come out at 5 p.m. tonight. It's going to be an awesome time. We have our graduation and award ceremony tonight at 5 p.m. Also, we have our Tuesday night prayer at 7 p.m. in the fellowship hall. And I want to encourage everyone to come out to pray. It is important that we pray, so much to be praying for. And as we go to the name of Jesus to pray, there is power when we unite together in the, in the body of Christ to just call upon the name of Jesus. So I encourage everyone to come out Tuesday night to prayer at 7 p.m. Also Friday night, we have our Friday night Bible study in the fellowship hall and rural rangers and girls ministries have their classes as well. Also, June the 16th is Father's Day, but we're also having our church picnic, the 12th uh, anniversary of Grace Christian Center. We're going to have our church picnic right outside, immediately following service. We are having a 70-foot water slide and a dunking booth, and I have, they have told me that they want to get me in this dunking booth. <laughs> and so, but I think the first one should be Pastor Michael, but we'll see about that. 
but we're going to be uh, raising uh, money to to rent those. It's going to be an awesome time. We had it last year, the water slide, and it was such an awesome time. And we have a sign-up sheet for whoever wants to bring food. The more, the merrier. It's, it's going to be an awesome time. So I had a plan last year. Go have fun, come back and eat, go uh, work off that food, come back and eat some more, go back. And so the more, the merrier. I'm telling you, bring, it was, we're probably going to have hot dogs and, and um, hamburgers, but the more, the merrier. Whatever you want to bring, bring and it's going to have it's going to be an awesome time and also i want to announce this um yesterday was the first day of hurricane season and so i know this part of the the region this part of the the nation we deal with hurricanes i just want you to be prepared because there's something already forming out in the gulf and everything but be prepared because we don't know what's going to happen this hurricane season but we know what happened uh two years ago so just be prepared it's going to be a hot summer, and I know the kids are going to be wanting to go to the pool, so just look out for the kids and, and just be prepared as a church and just be in prayer. God is going to be doing some awesome things this summer in Grace Christian Center. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and get our minds and our hearts prepared for the word of the Lord. Amen. If you have any cell phones at this time, please, please silence them at this time. We don't want to disturb the word of God. Amen. Father, we just thank you this morning. Lord, such an awesome time of praise and worship, Lord. Lord, we just thank the, the choir and the band, Father, for all that they do, Father, for leading us into your presence, Lord. And Lord, as we get into your word, Father, I pray that you anoint your servant right now in the name of Jesus. Speak to him before he speaks to us, Father. And Lord, let this word penetrate the mind and the heart this morning. And, Lord, let your will be done, Father. It is such an awesome time as we get together in the house of the Lord to just talk about you. You have done so much to us, Father. You are so faithful. And we adore you. We praise you. We honor and we glorify your name, Lord. And we ask this to be done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Glad to see every single one of you here today and those online. I want to welcome you, those online. Um, today is a good day. This is the, the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice. Amen? Amen. Give God praise in this house. Give him a mighty shout of victory. Amen. Jesus is good all the time. Amen? Even when we are not good, when we are not faithful, Jesus is still good. He is still faithful. Amen. That's why we have to keep our eyes on him. Amen. And not on each other because, man, we can fail. We can sure make a mess of a lot of stuff. Amen. Yes, we can. But I thank God for Jesus Christ because he is the God who sees us through every trial, every tribulation. And I praise his holy name. I mean that with all my heart. I pray that his word is spoken here and not anything that would be on my heart. I believe that this message is really a message that is really directed at, at the hearers, those who are hearing this, that they would uh, be encouraged as they see a deteriorating condition in America as well as in the church. But they would be encouraged because just as there are lying prophets, there are always the prophets of God. Just as there are always prophets of God, there are also prophets of the devil too. And so we have to be able to discern what is it that we're hearing, a prophet of God or a prophet of the devil, which is also a prophet of the world. They are two messages that are not the same. They contradict each other. They are against each other. And only God will prevail. Amen. 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 Father, I thank you with all my heart. I praise you, Lord, that this word falls on good ground. I thank you, Lord, for it is an honor and a privilege to receive this word from you, that you would put this upon my heart and my mind. Lord, you said we have not because we ask not. So, Lord, I'm asking you for your Holy Spirit to move and glorify your holy name because I cannot do that. Only you, Lord. It's not by might or strength, but by your spirit. 
That is it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The message this morning is entitled, Lying Prophets. Lying Prophets. Not laying down, but lying. Telling a lie. Lying Prophets. This morning we are going to be going through a journey of being in the Word, but also praying. Not only for our nation, not only for the church, but for the generation. The kids. This generation. Today, Lord willing, at five, we're going to have a graduation and an award ceremony for our school. And this school has come a long way. We will be going, Lord willing, into our fourth year. And uh, it's been trial and tribulation. Uh, some of it ordained. Some of it we bring upon ourselves. But the Lord sees us through all things. And I just thank the Lord that he is still on his throne. And he's pushing his people, guiding his people to places of victory. Now... This morning, we are going to be praying for the nation. We are going to be praying for the youth. And, of course, we look at Scripture, and in Proverbs 22, verse 6, it says here, Train up a child in the way he or she should go, and when they are old, he will not depart from it. It's so important to understand that this Scripture It's so vital to the, to the call of the parent to heed that and understand that every single thing we do as a parent, not just a school or not just the church that we would have them in, but even in, in our very private life, what we do at home, do they see us pray? Do they see us uh, doing the things of God in the very home, practicing the things of God? Because you, you cannot fool a child. They will believe that. You know, I have the kids in here today for a reason. Because we're going to be praying over them. You know, a lot of parents will tell their kids uh, that they're Santa Claus. But then only to grow up, the kids realize that there's no such thing as Santa Claus. Well, what do you think that tells a a, a kid? My parents lied to me this whole time. And so sadly, when when you multiply that into many different uh, factors of their life, Um, they don't really believe their parents. And so we have to understand that we should train up a child in the truth of God. That we should train up a child in the ways of God. Where they'll see us making mistakes, but they will also see us asking for forgiveness from God, from people, and, and seeking to make things right. Now, I want to talk about a prophet because in a minute we're going to be talking about the kids and about the government and about the church. So what happens when, li- when prophets lie? Now, a prophet, what is a prophet? A prophet proclaims. A lot of people in church think that a prophet is someone that performs miracles. But this is not always the case. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, that John the Baptist was the greatest born among women. The Bible says he was a prophet, but he performed no miracles that we know of. He simply preached repentance, and he made a way for the coming of the Lord. He was one of the greatest prophets. He was the greatest prophet that ever lived besides the Lord. But yet he did no signs, miracles, and wonders. He simply preached a message, God's truth. Now, we should all preach God's truth. So does that mean we're all prophets? No. But there is an office of the prophet that still exists today for God. You know, the Apostle Paul was a prophet. And the Apostle Paul wrote, I came to you, he said, not with persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the power of God. That is the mark of a prophet. When you come with a demonstration of the power of God, meaning... We all preach God's word. We all speak the truths of God. But there are some men and women in a certain office in the fivefold ministry who have an anointing to penetrate deeper. That get greater results. And so this is the prophet. Now, today everybody wants to be a prophet. You can look on YouTube. You can look on on, uh, Instagram. You can look on, uh, I mean, you name it, social media. It seems like everyone's a prophet now. Everybody goes by the apostle something, the the prophet something. 
You know, and, and this is ridiculous. It is a sham. Now, I believe in the fivefold ministry today, but what we see today are not prophets. They're all saying different things. You know what a prophet is? You look at the true mark of a prophet. They preach the truth of God, and it's convicting. And he will either draw you closer to God or away from God. They hated John so much, the John the Baptist, that they chopped his head off because he spoke the truth to a king who was sleeping with his sister-in-law. And John the Baptist spoke the truth. He spoke it with love and compassion, but with a fire of God also. That is the biblical mark of a prophet. Now, I want to take you to Micah chapter 2. Micah in the Old Testament chapter 2. I will be reading out of the NLT and the New King James Version both this morning. Not going to be in a lot of scripture, but I will be in this passage in Micah chapter 2. Again, the message is entitled Lying Prophets. Now, I have never preached out of the book of Micah before in my 12 years as a senior pastor. Last night, I was, Lord, what is the passage that you want from me? And it was almost as an audible voice, Micah 2. I'm telling you, I jumped out of my my chair and I ran to Anna as I read this passage because I already knew what he wanted me to say. But what you say has to be rooted in the word of God. If what you say is not rooted in the word of God, it's not of God. Because God will never tell you something that's not in alignment with the Bible. Amen? Now, as you, we go through the book of Micah, you're going to understand this message that the Lord has put on my heart. Let me read Micah chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. What sorrow awaits you who lie awake at night? Thinking up evil plans, you rise at dawn and hurry to carry them out, simply because you have the power to do so. When you want a piece of land, you find a way to seize it. When you want someone's house, you take it by fraud and violence. You cheat a man of his property, stealing his family's inheritance. Verse 3. But this is what the Lord says. I will reward your evil with evil. You won't be able to pull your neck out of the noose. You will no longer walk around proudly, for it will be a terrible time. In that day, your enemies will make fun of you by singing this song of despair about you. We are finished, completely ruined. God has confiscated our land, taking it from us. He has given our fields to those who betrayed us. Others will set your boundaries then, and the Lord's people will have no say in how the land is divided. Now, let me stop for that moment. In Micah chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, it sets up our foundation for this message that I'm about to speak on. Topics as lying prophets, abortion, a generation, and what is happening in the nation today. And how, sadly, What is happening in the nation is infecting the church of Christ in America. And see, what happens most part with the church in America, it spreads throughout the world because the church of Jesus Christ in America sends the Bibles out to the world, sends missionaries out to the world. We've sent false messages, prosperity gospel, which is a false gospel, um, Name it, claim it. You know, we, we've sent out false prophets, false teachers. You know, Anna and I were watching a, a deposition that a pastor was given recently, yesterday, uh, uh, trying to explain why he has to wear $6,000 shoes, why he has to uh, live in a $2 million house, taxes free. It's under the church, but it's his house. But he said, you know, an abuse of church funds. I'm not judging this man. But when we have that going on in the church of Christ in America, it affects 
the rest. That's what Jesus said. A little leaving ruins the whole batch. And so I want to talk about these things. First, let's talk about abortion. Well, you know, pastor, that is political. Why would you talk about abortion? Look, if society wants to hear what Hollywood actors have to say about abortion, why do we suddenly don't want to hear what the pastors and the evangelists and the men and women of God have to say about abortion? Because this is a subject about murder. The Bible says, God says, I created you in the wombs of your mother. I saw you before you were created. America is a part of the biggest genocide in the history of the world. I love the United States of America. I thank God I was born in this nation. I love our military. I, I pray for our leaders, for our president, regardless if I agree with him or voted for him. I pray for the president. I pray for senators. I pray for congressmen and women. But our nation is in serious trouble. We are in dire circumstances. And I believe with all my heart that this is a prophetic message. And I do not claim to be a prophet, but I believe this is a prophetic message. I believe that we are on the verge of an incredible, incredible meltdown or revival. And it is up to us. Let's look at the scriptures as we go through this. But again, abortion is front and center on the national stage. Now, sexual morality. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah and the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be at the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus is soon coming. Sexual morality to its height. The most perverted form of sexual morality is homosexuality. Not condemning anybody. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all made terrible, terrible mistakes. There are people in the church of God today who have had abortions in their life, but they've repented of this, and they have been forgiven and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? There are people who have fallen in immorality, but they have repented, and they have made things right with God and with people, and God is a forgiving God, and that's why I follow Jesus Christ, because he's a forgiving God. He's the one who seeks after us. Amen? You show me the last time Allah healed a blind man. You show me the last time Buddha fed 10,000, 5,000 people. You show me the last time any of these gods did that, because there are no such. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man could come unto the Father except through Jesus Christ alone. Amen. And so abortion is front and center on the national stage. Homosexuality, America has made its decision. It's legal. Homosexual marriage is legal. Can it be repealed? It doesn't look that way. It seems today that society is put... You know, it, wasn't, it was in the 1960s that secular American psychologists called homosexuality a perversion. But now they're saying it's not. They've reversed their decisions on it and they said, no, it's just something that's natural. They've changed. This is secular psychologists. So now it's pushed through the agenda such as Common Core in our education. Common Core, one of the most destructive things to come onto an educational system since 2010 in America, we have Common Core and it, is, it has an agenda to destroy this generation. We see, you know, we see how these things are happening in our, to our kids today. Since 2000, uh, 1990, 1990, the, early, the late 1990s, I'm sorry, the date escapes me for Columbine. Columbine was the first time we saw a mass shooting in the schools. And since then, we have had them every year, every year throughout the schools. The kids, the kindergartners up north, kindergartners murdered by an insane man. It, it, our problem's not with guns. Our prob I mean, because if there's no guns, they'll use rocks. If there's no rocks, they'll use knives. If there's no knives, they'll use whatever they need. Look, there was no gun, and Cain used a rock, probably, to kill his brother Abel. If someone wants to kill somebody, they're going to do it. Weapons are not the problem. Sin is the problem. 
Sin is the problem. And so we see how sexual morality is at its height. As America, we've made our decision. Now, today in America, churches are ordaining clergy who are homosexuals. They're marrying people in homosexual marriage. The Lutheran denomination has split in two. So the conservative Lutherans, they say, no, this is not of God. The other ones, yes, it is. There's a fight. There's a split. The Baptist, Southern Baptist Convention is going to have a split eventually. And that is very alarming because for the longest, the Southern Baptist Convention was an anchor in this nation for true biblical principles. And that is changing right before our very eyes. The Assembly of God. I love these people. They're all my brothers in Christ. The Pentecostal, the biggest, one of the biggest Pentecostal denominations, the Assembly of God. My family come through the Assembly of God. I was saved in an Assembly of God church when I was 16 years old. They're changing. They're, they're becoming more secular. They're moving away from the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they're moving into secularism. The, 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 the gifts of the Holy Spirit are ancient to them now. They don't acknowledge that. So much is happening. But God, I believe, is leaving a door open for the church to make one last stand for this nation. Because see, God does not want anyone to perish. God is not about destroying a nation. God is not about destroying people, about destroying society. Abortion is front and center on the national stage once again. Why? We see states like Alabama, states like Georgia, that are bringing out the heartbeat law. If you hear a heartbeat, it's illegal to kill that child. You know, that's a good thing, but more and more states are starting to catch on to this. And that's good because eventually the Supreme Court will have to hear Roe versus Wade all over again. And I believe that we're on the cusp of that. And that if that is not reversed, if the church does not pray, because you see, I believe Alabama and Georgia have accomplished something that has come through the, through the power of prayer. Christians are praying in this nation. Please don't, don't, don't miss this. They're praying in this nation. There are godly people in this nation who are praying and fasting, and they hear the blood of 60 million plus babies since 1973 that have been murdered. You know, the Lord told me one day in my heart, I didn't, it's not an audible voice, the Lord told me in my heart, He says, you know, cancer could have been cured by now. And I just said in my heart, wow. And the Lord, I heard the one who was supposed to cure cancer was amongst those 60 million babies that were murdered. But because the life was snuffed out, we missed out. The lives that could have been saved. A little more time to live to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Abortion is front and center. Now I also want to tell you something else. War is coming. If you always look, for example, the Civil War. There was a spiritual war before there was a sil the actual physical war. And I believe today that America is on the verge of not just another world war conflict. Because we see Russia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, America, all these little proxy wars that are going on. But what I also see by revelation of the Lord is we are seeing a civil war in the making in America once again. I remember back in 2008, I was sitting with some pastors and I told them, I said, you know, I believe that homosexual marriage will be legal in the United States one day. They laughed at me. They said, Mike, that'll never happen. Well, we know that we know what will happen. Okay. That is not because I have wisdom or no. It's because I just heard what God was saying through prayer. That's it. Anybody else has that opportunity to hear God too. I am, I am not nobody important. Now, what I have heard is that there will be a, a, a war in America, a civil war. You know, that is how this nation will, will crumble. We will crumble from within. I honestly believe 
we are such an incredible power military wise and I thank God for our military I thank God that President Trump is putting a lot of resources back into the United States military I pray for those young men and women who serve regardless of their religion their race whether they believe in God or not I pray for them the Bible says no greater love than a man who lays down his life for another and I pray for all our military because without their sacrifice we would not have the freedoms that we have today and that's why I even thank Jesus Christ even more because without his sacrifice salvation heaven would be closed we have to give honor where honor is due I am a praying Christian I thank God for our government I had a man uh, this week tell me who, who is of a different religion and he told me well we don't believe in war and I'm like, well, he goes, well, but you Christians believe in war. Tell me this, would Jesus command, if he was walking today, would he command you to go to war? I'm like, and I, I knew that question was coming, and I'm like, oh, Lord, help me. And the Lord spoke, and I said immediately, well, I know his father, Jesus' father, commanded King David to go to war. And I know that God says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he commanded in the Old Testament to go to war, there was a reason, right? Yeah, to protect the lineage of Jesus Christ. Okay. And there's a reason for war today. To protect the lineage of God's people when it comes to an end of fulfillment. If we had not intervened in World War II, you and I would not be standing in this free nation today. God moves through the most evil, evilest plans of men. I can make up that word, evilest. I'm a pastor. Pastors can make up words. Pastor's dictionary, look it up. And so, there is a physical war, it is on the horizon not just in the, the big world war conflict that's coming, but, you know, think about it. Communism, socialism, is now in the hearts of American citizens who serve in American government. Socialism? Look what's happening in Venezuela. Look at the people who are suffering. The, the women, the children, the men, who go days without eating food. What does that say to the heart of God? Because evil people in government are stealing from the society. That's socialism. Communism to its fullest. Dictatorship. Look at North Korea. One of the most poorest nations, North Korea. That's what happens when you have a dictator who is evil. But yet, in America, you, a, 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 a Hollywood actor can say whatever they want about gun control, about abortion, about sexual choice. But yet, the Bible that speaks about all those things, the house of God, the people of God can't say nothing about it. Well, no, you just preach the gospel. But my, my friend, that is the gospel. Talking about our nation murdering 60 million lives, that is the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in his son shall not perish, but have everlasting life. People don't believe in Jesus Christ. They believe in death. And guess what? Because our nation has done certain uh, prohib uh, uh, given certain laws in this land to live death perishing people dying this is what we see happening now those who will not listen and make a difference you might put yourself under judgment you have marked yourself for the judgment of God to fall upon you preachers who are afraid to speak the Bible they will find themselves one day before a holy God and they will have to give an account for the blood that is on their hands. This is what is happening. We look at Micah chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. God speaks in verse 1 
Let's bring this up quickly, please. Thank you, Valeria. You're such a blessing. Verse 1. What sorrow awaits you who lie awake at night thinking up evil plans? You rise at dawn and hurry to carry them out simply because you have the power to do so. Our senators, our congressmen, congresswomen, our elected officials, they have the power to do whatever they want. Amen? They are elected officials, but yet they are doing and changing the laws of this land that are so different from our founding fathers. And yes, our founding fathers were not perfect men. You show me a perfect man. Amen? But our founding fathers of the United States of America were men who believed that we should have equality. And it took a civil war in 1860s to get to where we are today. And man, it has been a long road. But I will tell you this. No nation on earth has ever experienced what the United States of America has in just uh, over 200 plus years. Ancient civilizations that have existed for thousands of years. Egypt, Rome, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years never have touched the prosperity, the blessing from God that has been put on such a nation like the United States of America. We've quickly received it, and guess what? We're quickly losing it. Why? Because of the end times. We are coming to the end. And I believe that this message of abortion that is becoming front and center... If we don't pray and this law is not changed, I believe that will be the judgment seal of God on this nation. Clarence Thomas, one of the Supreme Court justices, he wrote an article last week. And based on his article about abortion, we want to take this. Now is the time to take this back up to the Supreme Court because there is a consensus with the Supreme Court justices that Roe versus Wade will be overturned. Now is that window of opportunity to stop the bloodshed in America. But I don't, I feel like this is falling on deaf ears, not in this room, but in society. Look, verse 2 says this When you want a piece of land, you find a way to seize it. When you want someone's house, you take it by fraud and violence. You cheat a man of his property, stealing his family's inheritance. Abortion. What is a, fa what, 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 what is a family's inheritance? Children. Children, the lineage. You're stealing that from them. You're taking their property and you're taking their inheritance. You're taking their very children, their livelihood. Abortion. Look at verse 3. But this is what the Lord says. I will reward your evil with evil. You won't be able to pull your neck out of the noose. Yet God says when it happens, it's going to happen. God says I will reward good with good. I will reward evil with evil. What does the Bible say in the New Testament? You reap what you sow. As a nation, we will reap what we sow. God is the same yesterday, today, forever. God never changes. He has no favorites. It's amongst people and even amongst nations. If he judged Sodom and Gomorrah, he will judge all nations, America included. We cannot be arrogant Americans and say, God will never judge us. Look at the good we've done. Look at this. Verse 3. I will reward evil with evil. You won't be able to pull your neck out of the noose. You will no longer walk around proudly. Americans are known to be cowboys. Proud people. You will no longer walk around proudly, for it will be a terrible time. And that day your enemies will make fun of you by singing the songs of despair about you. We are finished, completely ruined. God has confiscated our land, taken it from us. He has given our fields to those who betrayed us. Others will set your boundaries then, and the Lord's people will have no say-so in how the land is divided. There are people in our government today that are from Muslim backgrounds. Okay? They do not like American culture, American ways. You know what? Neither do I. I'm a Christian. But Islam 
is dicing into our government in the form of congressmen, congresswomen, and they are making changes. Look, look, God says in the scripture to Israel, he said, because you are wicked and you are doing these evil things, I am going to allow the enemy to come into your land and take it from you. What do we have? Immigration problem right now, right? Right? We are supposed to welcome all people. Am I right? Yes. But what happens when the wrong people want to take advantage of that system? Which is what we see happening. Look, I'm for all who want a better life to come to this nation. Okay? And to make this nation a great nation. But when you have people who are coming under the, that guise and they're, and they're coming with an ulterior motive, we're in trouble. It happened that way to Israel and it's going to happen to America. And we'll look at the last verse, please, verse 5. Others will set your boundaries then and the Lord's people will have no say so in how the land is divided. If we don't pray now and get this right, when it all hits the fan, terrible times come, we will have no say so in this nation. We will have no, God will say, you had time to pray to me, but you were too busy playing video games. You were too busy with your extracurricular hobbies. You were too busy doing, uh, focusing on, on how to have your best life now. You were too busy doing all these other things and not focusing on my son, Jesus Christ, and being the prayer warrior. You know, some of y'all just come on Sundays. I'm talking to you too online. We just show up on Sunday. If this is all our Christian life is about, coming to Sunday church, then we deserve to have things taken from us from the enemy. If we're not really in, in, the, in, in the meat of the gospel and part of the body of Christ and active and doing something, because look, I look at the other side, the liberal side. They're active. They're in grassroots movements. They're in the community. They're feeding people. They're doing what they need to do, all in the name of human secularism, all in the name of Allah, all in the name of all these false things, not in the name of Jesus. And they're doing it, and they're gaining disciples. What are we doing as Christians? Our churches are empty. Our houses of worship are empty. They're full of false worship. They're gossiping and slandering and tearing each other down. That is what is happening in the church of God. And people, the secular people, atheists, they look at, they see, Jesus, you, this is what's happening in your house? I don't want that. And that's why we see our churches empty. That's why we see, as, as Rabbi Ron said, Islam is growing greater than Christianity. We are losing our land to the enemies. It happened to Israel. It is happening to America right before our very eyes. The offspring of socialist and communist leaders are of the past are now grown up and they serve in our very own government as senators and congr congressional leaders. We live, again, these are my words that God has given to me that I'm giving to you. I'm not taking this from some other pastor. We live in the greatest moment of the age of this world, the end time. We, as believers of Jesus Christ, hey, what is our life about today? Look, Bill Gates, George Soros, Facebook founder, what's his name, Mark? Yeah, Mar Facebook founder. They are sowing material seeds to uh, advance a demonic agenda. One world government. Deep state government. Oprah Winfrey is a tool, you can laugh at this, but she is a tool that is utilized in the gathering of false religions and helps people's needs. She buys them all a car. She meets their material needs. And you see her gathering all religious leaders together. It's an ecumenical movement from a very successful businesswoman. An ecumenical movement is across religious lines. 
And this is what we see happening. We see her talking to Joel Osteen. We see her talking to other Christian leaders, Rick Warren. And their, Rick Warren is Chrislam. He's bringing Islam and Christianity together. We see Louis Engel, Louis Engel, who is affiliated with the New Apostolic Reformation, with Bethel Church, with Jesus Culture, with Hillsong. All these people, passion movement, they're going out and they're trying to have revival in Jesus' name. But yet, in 2016, Louis Engel, look it up on video on YouTube, Louis Engel and a, a, a Catholic leader of the church were on a stage kissing each other's feet, bringing Christianity and Catholic Catholicism together. What? What does look at Revelation 22 8 through 9 say? Now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God, even John. The apostle was so caught up in the incredible revelation of Jesus Christ. Watch this in the book of Revelation that he almost fell into idolatry. And the angel told him, don't do that. How much more for people today who live in this world who don't have a prayer life, who don't really know God, but they just want to see all people come together and just peace, peace, peace. How much more will they more quickly fall into idolatry and worship each other. As you saw Louis Engel and a Catholic leader kissing each other's feet in 2016 in Los Angeles, California in an in, in L.A. Coliseum. Look it up. Video's out there. You'll find it. That is wrong. We are not called to kiss each other's feet to bring together different religions. We are to worship God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father except through Christ alone. Those are the words of Jesus Christ, not of Michael Garcia. But we see the, Lou Engel, who's affiliated with Jesus Culture, Bethel Church, Bill Johnson, the Nard. The, so many re, uh, ministries are affiliated today with the New Apostolic Reformation. It's false preaching of the gospel that's infiltrating so many churches. But we were warned about this in 2 Thessalonians, in 2 Timothy. Paul, in his final letters, he wrote to the church of the end times and said, there will be many false teachers that will have itching ears. They want to hear what they want to hear. We, but you see, Michael, this is not a message that is for today. Michael, we just need to all get along. Michael, we just, we just need to... We need to go to Jesus! Amen? Is our Christian life summed up as attending Sunday services only, eating Sunday lunch with church folks, giving in tithes and offerings, and just hanging out every now and then? We're called to pray. We're called to be involved. We're called to be the church of Jesus Christ. We should have a passion and a desire to walk in holiness and to avoid sin. See, I forgot some of those things in my life. We should have a passion and a desire to preach the gospel, to live the gospel in every day, in every part of our life. We should have a passion and a desire to walk with Jesus Christ. The one who created this earth, the one who created our soul. But some of us, we're just so dead to God. We're so, we're so in, desensitized by sin. We're entertained by sin. We'll pay 20 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever it costs to see a, a movie that curses Jesus' name, takes God's name in vain, plays with sexual morality. You're entertained by sin. You'd rather sit there for an hour and a half or two hours and just be entertained by it in the movie house. And you can't even sit in a church and hear the word of God preached for not even 50 minutes without falling asleep. We'll give our money here, here. We'll give our money there, there. But we don't honor God with our times, with our talent, with our treasure. We're still in bondage by smoking and drinking and perversion and sexual morality. These things can be broken in the twinkle of an eye in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You don't have to do this anymore, Christian. Today is the day. We can make a change today. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is. Romans 12, 2. Amen. Hallelujah. 
But what is the pulpit saying today? What, how are the preachers living? The, it, the, the church is in the way, the condition that it's in, and it's because of the preacher's fault, the pastor's fault. We have to take responsibility for this first. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. And that's definitely what has happened. But we've got to come back to Jesus. Look, this is what Nikki Cruz said. Now, this is not my words. Christians today have developed a false faith, a faith without commitment. What is commitment all about? It simply means to devote ourselves unconditionally to the Lord and his work. Now, you want to listen to Nikki Cruz. This is a man in the 1950s was one of the most feared, dangerous gangsters in New York City. And when he met David Wilkerson, he tried to kill David Wilkerson. And David Wilkerson just loved him and told him the truth. And Nicky Cruz was set free. He was actually involved in satanic worship. And he was set free. Today he's in his probably almost 80 years old and he still travels the world preaching the gospel. Nicky Cruz, look him up. Incredible man of God. A false faith. Lying prophets. Micah, now let's go to Micah chapter 2. We're almost done. Micah chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. We're going to continue in the chapter of Micah, chapter 2. Now watch this. He was speaking to Israel then, but I believe he could speak to any nation. And I believe he's speaking to us today. Look, what do the people say when they hear such things? Verse 1 through 5, verse 6 says this. Don't say such things, the people responded. Don't prophesy like that. Such disasters will never come our way. Should you talk that way, O family of Israel? Will the Lord's Spirit have patience with such behavior? If you would do what is right, you would find my words comforting. You hear that? This is what the prophet is saying, that when he spoke the word of God, you can keep that up. When he spoke the word of God, they didn't want to hear that. Don't speak that way, they said in verse 6. Don't say such things, verse 6 says. Don't say such things. Don't say such things. Don't prophesy like, don't preach like that. You're yelling too much in the pulpit. You shouldn't be that angry. I'm not angry. I'm passionate for your soul. But I, I can't say anything unless I myself was saved. But I'm passionate. Hey, this is a message that's coming to pass before our very eyes. But the people to then and the people today, they don't want to hear this. They want to hear your best life today. How God can bless your bank account. How God can 10 steps to becoming uh, the, just a, a spirit-filled life. When the Bible tells us that heaven and earth are passing away and that the, that the kingdom of God is advancing, but it's going to be taken by violence. Jesus had to bring in the kingdom of heaven through violence, through wicked people. And we are going to follow him. He said, whoever wants to follow me, whoever wants to be my disciples, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me daily. Meaning that we're going to have to pick up the testimony of Christ. It's the cross of Christ and it's our testimony. And we're going to have to go through violent things. We're going to have to see wicked people. We're going to have to push forward the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to go through trials. We're going to go through tribulation. And guess what? If we have a false faith, if we're not committed to Jesus Christ, then we're never going to make it. And that's why people backslide. That's why people come and people go. Like the waves, they come and they see the land. How are you doing? And then they just get sucked back out into the population, the sea. The churning of the waves where Peter tried to walk on the water, but he looked to the left. He looked to the right. He saw the churning of the sea of the waves and he lost his faith. He could not walk on water. Revelation says in, in chapter um, um, 11, I believe, that the beast stood on the seashore and he looked and another beast came out of the sea. The, the, this was the actual coming of the Antichrist. The sea is symbolic for the people of the nations. The sea is churning. Society is churning. But they don't want to hear what the prophet has to say. They want to hear a lying prophet. Look at verse 8, Micah 2, 8. Yet to this very hour, my people rise against me like an enemy. 
You steal the shirts right off the backs of those who trusted you, making them as ragged as men returning from battle. You have evicted women from their, unple- from their pleasant homes and forever stripped their children of all that God would give them. You hear me this morning? Up, be gone. This is no longer your land and your home, for you have filled it with sin and ruined it completely. Verse 11. Watch this. Oh, my goodness. Suppose a prophet full of lies would say to you, I'll preach to you the joys of wine and alcohol. That's just the kind of prophet you would like. That's what America wants to hear today from the Church of Jesus Christ. The joys of life. Be merry. Be cheerful. When we see an earth filled with sin going to its destruction, we are are living in the greatest moment in the history of this world. We are about to see the second coming of Christ, but before that, we are about to see the coming of the Antichrist. The most wickedest man that has ever lived on and ever will live. We will see that in our lifetime. And I have told you this, and I will say this again. The United States Constitution, and it tears my heart to pieces by saying this because many men and women have given their lives for the freedoms that we have today. But we will lose our United States Constitution one day. It will be torn to pieces. But we're not saved by a piece of paper. We're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so you better put your hope in Jesus and not in our Constitution. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But Jesus says, but my word shall remain forever. And if your eyes are on Jesus, if your hope and your faith is in Jesus, you shall live. You will not perish. Give God praise. Amen. Amen. Now, amen. But verse 11, let's read that one last time. Suppose a prophet full of lies would say to you, I'll preach to you the joys of wine and alcohol. That's just the kind of prophet you would like. What do you like today? What do you want to hear today? Did you think that I would stand here and, and, and tell you how, how God's not going to deal with your sin? How God, he just understands you're not perfect and it's okay. Hey, Christian, it's okay to smoke that little weed. Hey, Christian, it's okay to have a little perversion in your life every now and then. It's okay, Christian, to hop in and out of this bed. It's okay. God will forgive you. God forgives a repentant heart, but God does not give a habitual lifestyle of sin. You don't know how hard this is for me to say up here because nobody wants to be disliked nobody wants you know and and people will point finger at you when you speak the truth of god they'll point finger they're going to be pointing fingers at me they always have from the beginning and they always will and but but see my joy does not come from people my joy comes from jesus christ i sure would like to get along with people but that's not my agenda i have my issues that i have to deal with when i see jesus at the judgment seat of god at the judgment seat of christ and so do you christian But I believe God has given us a window to make things right. I believe that. And I believe we should take advantage of this. Because we're quickly seeing judgment coming. We should not be laughing at dirty jokes. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We should not be casting our eyes on what is ungodly. You're at the mall. You see this. You see that. You shouldn't be looking at that. Stop it. Cut it off. Stop. Immediately, stop. That's not of God. But lying prophets will tell you otherwise. Lying prophets will say, hey, you know, hey, we're not perfect, just forgiven. Well, the word of God says, be holy, saith the Lord, for I am holy. Holy means to be set apart, meaning that you are getting away from this world and you're drawing near to God. That's what holy means. And that's what's missing in the church today. Holiness. That's what's missing in the life of a Christian today. Holiness. Lion prophets. 
surround our president. Lying prophets surround our government leaders. Lying prophets are surrounding our youth today. So, Father, we lift up the President of the United States. President Donald Trump. Lord, we lift up Vice President Mike Pence. Lord, we lift up every congressman, every congresswoman, every senator. Lord, we lift them all up to you. We pray, Father, first for their salvation, which can only come through Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for their protection. We are not at battle with flesh and blood with each other, but with powers of darkness. Father, I pray not just for their salvation. I pray for their, their families, their spouses, their children. I pray, Lord, that it would be right in their heart with you. Lord, I pray that you would give them godly wisdom to do your will, to do their job, that it would be in alignment with your will. Father, I pray for their protection that, Lord, that wicked people who are around them would be cast away and that you would surround them with people of God who know the word of God. Lord, I pray for their protection. I pray for your favor to fall upon them. I pray for a transformation in their homes, in their personal lives. Lord, that they would be right with you because they have found Jesus Christ. Lord, as I lifted up Barack Obama, Lord, I lift up Donald Trump to you. Lord, uh, I think the trap that we make, Lord, is Christians. We tend to identify ourselves as Republican or Democrat. That's wrong, Lord. And Lord, we should repent of that. Lord, uh, I pray, regardless of who is in the White House, I pray for that man because he has a job, whether he is a Republican or Democrat, the pressures that are on his shoulder. Lord, I pray for that president, which happens to today be Donald Trump. I pray, Father, for the salvation of his soul, for his family. Lord, I pray, Father, that you would make a way for him, that he would lead this nation and fulfill your plan. As you, as you come to every man and woman, you have no favorites. Just because he's the president means that you look at him greater than you would any one of us. But you love us all equally. So I pray for him, Lord, to help him, please. Please, Lord, give him wisdom. May he freely receive salvation of Jesus Christ. Lord, and I pray for our youth. Lord, I pray for our youth. Lord, we've seen how, oh, and there's any youth in this sanctuary, just adults, just lay your hands on them. Lord, we pray for the youth that you would protect them. The devil has infiltrated their schools through common core, through violence. And we see kids losing their lives in school today. When my mama and daddy grew up in school, the biggest thing you could probably get in trouble with for, was for running in the hallways or chewing gum. And today we have it all in school. Rape, murder, drug abuse. Lord, we've strayed so far from you with our children. We took away prayer in 1962. And look where we are today, Lord. In just a little over 50 years, look at the violence in our schools. Lord Jesus, I pray that churches would rise up and start private schools. Lord, that they would start private schools. Lord, that they would have, they'd have beautiful buildings. Let them be in function every day, housing children to educate them. Lord, there are many good curriculums out there for them to buy, to teach the kids. We have such easy laws to do this, Lord. Father, help the ministries in America to grab these kids and to teach them in the ways of God. Help us all, Lord, it, this is the most difficult thing to do is to be involved in the life of a child. It is not easy. It is tough work, Lord. 
on the parts of teachers, principals, and parents. It is not an easy job raising kids. But your word says in Proverbs 22, Lord, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. Lord, I believe in that scripture with all my heart. And so, Lord, I pray for our youth who are not able to come to a, a, a private school, a Christian school. They're in the public school system. Lord, Lord, I pray for the salvation of their souls. I pray for their protection because the wolves are out there and they're circling them, ready to pounce on them. Father, I pray for their protection. Lord, guard their minds, guard their hearts. May the blood of Jesus cover them and fill them. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Protect them. I thank you, Father. I praise your holy name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I know that this is a message that may not be well received. But I know that what you have heard me speak about this morning, you see happening in society. And so I pray that you would allow this message to, to penetrate your heart and to seek God with all the strength that he can give you and to make it right with Christ. Many are falling to the left and to the right. But we get, have to get back up. And we have to go forward in the name of Jesus Christ. And make a difference in these last days that we're in. Amen? Amen. 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 Give God praise in this house. Receive that word in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, church, before we leave, we, we, uh, we, we're, as a, the purpose of Grace Christian Center is to create community. That, that was from the very beginning, in 2007, when this church was started, to create community, to create fellowship in the body of Christ. Now, we're not losing sight of that goal. That's the second goal. The first goal is to preach the gospel so souls will get saved. And I believe many people have heard the gospel through this ministry and have been saved. And I praise God for that. He has all the glory for that. But let us not give up. Let us continue in this work. Let us be faithful in the church that God has planted you in. Those watching online, if this message has blessed you, if this church blesses you, then help us. That's what Paul says. Is it wrong if we sow a spiritual seed among you? Is it wrong if we reap a material harvest? Paul is saying, bless the ministries so that we can continue to be a blessing and do what we're called to do. Look, I'm not going to say it any other way. Be a cheerful giver. Either you give or you don't. That's between you and God. But hear those words. That's between you and God. Be a cheerful giver. Support. Support where you're fed from spiritually. We have no problem feeding the convenience store. Every morning we'll go and get our coffee there. Donuts. Shipley's. No problem going and supporting the restaurants. Eating out. Buying the nice clothes. No problem supporting Macy's, J.C. Penney's. No problem. But first and foremost, support the house of God. Because if the house of God closes, then what happens? Be a cheerful giver. As Rabbi Ron said, don't be a house of felons. Don't be a house of felons. I'm not going to try and convince anyone to give, but we could sure use your help. We cannot do this alone. We all do this together. I'm praying for students. I'm praying for lost souls. I'm praying for families. I'm praying that God would use us to do as much as we can to reach out to, to not only reach out to the lost in our community, 
but to even encourage other churches that we, we meet up with and talk to, to any pastor, because that's what this is all about. And um, I look forward to the graduation we're going to have this evening at 5 o'clock. These kids have come a long way, and I'm so proud of them uh, in a godly way, proud, not worldly way. But uh, I thank you for being with us this morning. We all have our battles to fight, but if we do it in the name of Jesus, we will prevail because Jesus has done it all. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Lord, again, many people here who are praying. Lord, I pray for those who might be sick. Lord, you are the healer. I pray for those who might be suffering from certain sicknesses in their body. Lord, I, I, don't, I am not a healer. I'm, I don't know how to do any of that, Lord. I, don't, I can't do any of that, Lord. All I know how to do, Lord, is pray. And so, Lord, I'm praying for physical healings. Pray, Lord, for spiritual healings here. I pray, Lord, that, Lord, that lives will be changed for your glory. Lord, I pray that there would be an incredible outpouring of your Holy Spirit that there will be a renewed passion to follow you, Jesus, and that they won't forget it on Monday morning or Thursday morning. But they will, this will become a life-transforming moment right here, right now, that they will have a renewed spirit and a steadfast heart to follow you, Jesus, to sow spiritual seed into their home church, into everyday life, that they'll honor you, Lord, with their time, their talent, and their treasure. Lord, we lift up the tithes and the offerings to you as they're brought into the house of God right here, Lord. You know our needs as a church. We're not only praying for our needs to be met as a church. Lord, we have a lot of things that need to be done in this physical building. Work on this construction work. Lord, we're praying, Father, for that individual that we want to bless as a church. We're praying for that. Lord, I'm praying for students, Lord. Lord, that we could, this church could grow for your namesake. Lord, there were a hundred students in this church, in this school at one time back in the day when it was King's, King's Row Academy. Over a hundred students here, Lord. Lord, I know we can surpass that number for your glory alone. I pray for that, Lord. Lord, I'm praying, Lord, that we need workers. Lord, we need musicians. We need choir. We, Lord, we, I want to see your house full, Lord, because that's what pleases your heart, Lord. So, Lord, is it wrong if we ask for, for those things? Lord, your word says, pray to the Lord of the harvest for workers. So we're asking you, Lord. We're asking you, Lord, to meet our every need as we not only live the gospel, but preach the gospel. Lord, help my brothers and sisters in every financial need of their life. Help them to overcome debt, to be, Lord, lenders and not borrowers. Teach them, Lord, how to get out of debt and stay out of debt. Bless them, Lord. And allow them, Lord, to be overcomers from the evil one every day. Yes, Lord, give them wisdom. Increase their faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Father. And all God's people say amen and amen. Amen. And that is it. Amen. God is good. God is good. Praise his holy name. Give him praise in his house. Praise you, Jesus.